Since many of you are new to college, I want to talk a little bit about email at college. Now I know you guys have used email before, I get it. So here I am on the old fuddy-duddy who's about to tell you how to use some sort of thing online that you probably think that you understand better than I do. And you know, maybe you do, but I want to point out some tips based on the kind of email I get as a faculty member. Um, and I think what, what is driving some of the struggles that students have with email at college is that you're probably getting a lot more email than you were used to in the past. And you're also probably interacting with people over email uh, in different types of relationships that you might have used, been used to in the past. And so I want to point out just a couple of things, um, my suggestions, these are my tips for how to use email. Um, they're based on my experiences and I have good justification for them. But um, so to, in order to um, sort of illustrate some of the, pro some of the problems uh, that, that we face with email, I'm going to look at an email I got from Greg. Um, Okay, so, so let's, let's just go through this step by step, okay? And we'll start with each component of the email. So the, the first problem with this email is the subject. RE colon. If you are writing a formal letter, that might mean regarding. If you are writing email, that is taken as a sign that this is a response to a previous email. So please don't send someone a new email with RE subject because that's just confusing. When I get an email like this, I start to think, did I miss the email that he sent earlier that was subject FYS scheduling? You know, so, so that's very confusing. So first tip, don't start email subjects with RE. Second tip, have an appropriate subject for the content of your message. So you can see here that um, if you can actually read this text, uh, uh, Jazz Master Greg is contacting me because he likes my cat. Um, however, the subject of this email is REFYS scheduling. So when you are exchanging email with somebody, make sure that the subject line is appropriate to what you're discussing. Sometimes you start a discussion under one subject and it becomes appropriate at a given point to change the subject line because the topic of the conversation has changed. So that's a very polite, very nice thing to do. Um, the thing that really will drive people nuts is what I've seen some students do, which is when they want to get in touch with me, it seems like they search their email, they find the last email they got from me, and they reply to it, regardless of whether or not the content of the reply has anything to do with the subject of the email uh, that we were exchanging before. So make sure that the subject of your email is appropriate to what you're talking about. The next thing is, the next issue here is in the, the, the name. So you probably actually want to send some test emails from your UB account to another email address that you control to make sure that the name is showing up properly. Now I don't think you can even, um, I actually had to hack the HTML of this page to get this to work. So I think that your UB email accounts should automatically do the right thing. Except if you're one of those unfortunate students at UB whose first name, at least according to our records, is period. We have some issues um, uh, sort of dealing with foreign students uh, and understanding how to take your name from your passport and uh, make it into a name at UB. And so if your name is starts with period, um, if that's the first name according to our records, you might want to actually get that changed because it looks a little funny. Um, okay, so make sure that the name that comes across when you send email is appropriate and, and don't send it from Jazzmaster or anything, right? That's kind of strange. Um, Okay, so let's, let's talk about the content here. And the, the, I'm not going to talk about the content of the email, but like normal rules for any sort of written communication apply. Please punctuate appropriately, capitalize appropriately, and don't capitalize random words. Um, but let's talk a little bit about just the formatting here. Okay, so there's, there, there's some issues here, right? Um, he spelled my name wrong. Never a good starting point. Um, there is some extreme use of fonts, emoji, other types of things that don't look particularly professional. Um, so just remember, faculty, other students here, you all, we all get a lot of email. And so I want to be able to read email quickly and be able to provide you with a useful response. 
I don't care if you call me professor. I don't care if you call me Dr. Professor Jeffrey Challen, PhD. That doesn't bother me. Other people, maybe so. But what I care about is um, that you, you have a con the content of the email that I can read quickly, and then I can try to help you out. Um, so you know, please make the email easy to read, to the point, short. OK, down here at the bottom, common source of uh, problems in, in email, S the signature. So look, I get it, you know, the signatures are fun to set up and whatever, um, but please keep your email signature down to a dull roar. Uh, no huge photographs. Um, you don't need six or seven or ten lines in your email signature with a full biographical description. Ideally, uh, email signatures will include one thing that Greg's email signature does not, which is a link to a website, to your LinkedIn page if you don't have a personal website, to a personal website if you're a computer scientist because you should have a personal website, it's not that hard. Um, that's the number one thing I want to see in the signature of an email. If you have to have a signature, keep it to two lines, maybe one line, and a link. That's it. Everything else is already here for me, right? I don't need your email address in the signature. I know where I got the email from. I also don't need your name if the name that your email is sent from is appropriate. So really, the signature should be a starting point for me to find out more about you if I want to, um, but not so much text that it pushes down the reply and other things. So long email signatures are, are generally, in my book, a no-no. So hopefully this gives you some idea of how to send email uh, to people on campus. Um, and we'll do a similar video talking about how to manage email. Equally important, probably more challenging with email at college because this may be the first time that you're going to have to deal with the volume of email that you've dealt with uh, that you haven't. This is I'm starting over.